It is annoying sometimes being a scientist because you know, people assume you know everything or about certain things, but they don't know anything about what you're on about, so they try and talk to you about it, which is polite, but it gets annoying after a while. You know, just repetitiveness, you know? Because people often say to me, when I say to you, what, what do you do? And I say, oh, I'm a neuroscientist. They say, well, what does that involve? I say, well, you know, I study the brain and whatnot. And nine times out of ten, the response is always, oh, I tell you what, you can practice on my brain if you like. And, you know, like, you hear that so many times over so many years, you get a bit sick of it. The last time someone said that to me, they said, you know, you can practice on my brain. I said, you know what, if I had a pound for every time I hear that, I could afford to have you killed. You know, it's the last time I got a Christmas present on my grand, but, you know, it was worth it. I'd do it again. She's at home now, obviously. Kept telling everyone, no, oh, do you threaten to kill me? Don't be silly, Nan, don't be silly. I'm lots of eggs and all that. Love. The thing about love is, it's really hard to define in that it doesn't have any sort of structure or appearance or any accepted definition. But people think they know what it is, but do they really? Because I remember speaking to a guy once and he said he loves his girlfriend, which is fair enough. Uh, two minutes later, conversation had changed. He confessed that he loves seafood, loves his girlfriend and seafood. Now, I only assume he had sex with one of those things. But the thing about love is, you can never tell. But it's generally accepted as a good thing, which I don't think is true either. It has led to a lot of grief, um, a lot of wars, we fought over love, a lot of crime, crimes of passion is a phrase generally accepted. I mean, the very symbol of love, the arrow through the heart, that's got a very grim reality basis from uh, medieval times, I believe, uh, when Christian dogma is what controlled people's lives. And in rural towns, you know, sex before marriage is very much frowned upon, a mortal sin, if anything. Uh, of course, you can't stop teenagers. They'd wander into the woods for an illicit tryst, as it were. And uh, if they were caught by the local law enforcement, they were hunted down and shot with bows and arrows at the time, hence the arrow through the heart symbol. I mean, it gets worse. The Children who play in the woods who were paid if they came back from the woods after seeing uh, an illegal young couple involved in shenanigans, and they would tell the magistrate and they would send out uh, law enforcers to just basically shoot them. Hence the symbol of the small child with the bow and arrow. Which just goes to show that you can use love to justify any amount of bollocks, including that previous claim that I just said. People use a lot of metaphors for love, you know, to help try and understand it. And they get confusing, you know? People like the typical metaphor, if you're with someone, like someone says, oh, how can you settle down? Is there a white girl for a hamburger? Well, you got a steak at home. To be honest, though, if you had steak every night, you get sick of it. You might even be vegetarian. I don't know if it's a metaphor for gay or not, but some gays are vegetarian, no doubt. Some aren't. Some heterosexuals are vegetarian. It's, uh, it's a metaphor that doesn't really work very well, doesn't it? I know, I'm a married man, and quite happily so. I never liked going out and on the pool, as it were. And you know, people find that confusing. You know, like I think the metaphor I like is I prefer to cook for myself rather than uh, get a takeaway every night. That's what some people say, well, I like going for takeaways, there's variety, there's convenience, but the way I see it, there's a lot more chance of getting a disease. Future. A lot of people worry about the future. I don't, personally. I think everything is going to be all right, because it normally does turn out that way. Global warming, for example. I know it looks a bit grim now, but um, nature always strives for equilibrium. Now think about it. Global warming happens, ice caps melt, sea levels rise, sea levels rise, sea comes further inland, every bank holiday. I don't have to drive so far to get to the beach. On the drive so far, CO2 emissions drop, global warming stops, cools down, sea recedes. Repeat as necessary. Oh, I had a dream once. 
<clears throat> might have been an omen of the future. I mean, who knows? What happened was this cyborg from the future came and shot my best friend. Now that could be representative of how today's society is moving. The cyborg, half man, half machine. Today you see people with iPods, MP3 players, mobile phones, laptops, PADs. Everyone has technology on them at all times. It's only going to go one way. And the killing of the best friend. Think about these days. People would rather text than talk. They spend more time on forums and chat rooms and going out and meeting people, socializing. It's the death of human interaction as we know it. So was this an omen of things to come? Or was it more to do with the fact that I was actually in my friend's house at the time and had just fallen asleep pissed watching Terminator? You decide. I think old people get a bad rap in this country. It's not really fair. I mean, you ask anyone where they were when Princess Diana died, they'll be able to tell you. You ask anyone where they were when the Queen Mother died, no one have a clue. I know where I was. I was halfway between my house and my friend's house. I was going to meet him, we go to the pub. And uh, his mother answered the door. And uh, he said, you know, he's not ready yet, come sit down. She said to me, as I sat down, Queen Mother's dead, because they just announced the news. And I didn't know that. So I thought she said, Dean, your mother's dead. Which, you know, perplexed me. So I said, no she's not. She's in the house, she's having her tea. Which perplexed her. We are a bit of a strange situation here, because there's me thinking she's telling me my mother's dead in a very untactful manner, or tactless if you will, and there's her thinking that I'm claiming or under the impression that the Queen Mother's in my house eating chips. Thankfully, May turned up at this point to enter the pub, which, with hindsight, seems a bit disrespectful. Shouldn't really drink to the death of an old lady. That's a smart of Thatcher, obviously. The way I see it, Drugs will always be a problem. I mean, it doesn't matter what they are, really. Illegal, illegal, people are going to take drugs. I mean, that's the only way the government can actually get rid of them, seems to be legalizing them, then banning them, like smoking. I mean, in Wales, we've had the smoking ban for quite a while now, and I, for one, wasn't surprised. I'm not a smoker myself, but it was quite obvious it was going to happen. Because the adverts, you know, for it to do Discouraged smoking, so I get more and more stupid. The final one I saw was smoking damages your eyes, you know, all the smoke coming out of your eyes. So what they're effectively saying is, smoking is a bad habit. Stop that or you'll go blind. Which sounded familiar at the time. Yeah, I've heard that before, and to be honest, it didn't work then either. Crime is another one. Nobody likes crime, really. They wouldn't, would they? But I've been the victim of crime myself, so I can say that. It wasn't nice, you know. I went out one evening, came back, someone had broken in, and all my DVDs had been nicked. It wasn't even a great night either, you know. It wasn't worth getting robbed for. The only thing they left were Kirby Enthusiasm DVDs, Seinfeld DVDs, and Woody Allen DVDs. Which says to me that they were anti-Semitic. Be looking into, you know, local Nazi groups that are a bit short on cash. Yeah, I didn't really mind, it could be a lot worse, but people said to me strange things like how can you face staying there anymore, stay in that room when you know someone else has been in there who you didn't know? Uh, which I thought was a stupid point. I lived in a rented house. My mum's probably had loads of people in it who I've never met. They probably had sex there too. My mattress might have seen more sex than Peter Stringfellow's butler, but you know, you don't think about these things. I'm only assuming the burglars didn't have sex there. Which I think is also a crime. Sex isn't a crime, but probably breaking into someone else's house and having sex there is probably a crime. I'll look into that. <laughs>